Hi guys, um, I'm sorry for the long delay between videos. Uh, obviously I've gotten a little older. Uh, now I'm teaching in Thailand, um, and there was a great response to the Fibonacci video in the, in the Golden Mean, so I wanted to show you how to make these. These were the calipers uh, that my boys and I were using when we went around um, collecting examples of the Golden Ratio in day to day. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you uh, just how I make them. For this project, you're not going to need really much anything at all other than a straight edge, uh, a utility knife to cut with. I can cut mine right here. Um, pencil, of course, maybe some, maybe some markers um, just to make the lines nice and tight. I've got some brads here to, that will make the hinges on our calipers a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we're going to do it the way the old geometers did, just with a square and a straight edge and something to draw with. Um, it's going to come out really well. You will not need uh, your phone uh, with the Buena Vista Social Club uh, rocking, but I have found it does not hurt. Uh, as far as the actual materials we're going to be making this out of, um, we have some future board here. Uh, you could use stiff cardboard. I'm using this stuff called future board. It's kind of a plastic equivalent of that. I'm not sure why they call it future board. Probably because in the future it will be here because it's made of plastic and I'll be dead and gone. Haha. <laughs> um, I'll be teaching how to build a soapbox later on in a different video. Uh, this is what we're going to use today. It's nice and firm and it, it'll, it'll hold up under wear and tear. Okay, so the way I started off this project, I should say, the first set of calipers I, I made, um, I did by um, using the book, The Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe by uh, Michael Schneider. Awesome book if you can get it. Uh, he describes a method whereby you um, use a compass to scribe some circles, you also ultimately form a pentagon, uh, and then you you make the calipers off of that. The problem with that all, all, uh, was that I had to make an absolutely massive set of circles in order for it to work. So I was looking for an easier way to do it. Um, what I found was online a few templates, and this is one, I uh, just checked below for the link to the template. Uh, this gives the, the, the links of the different parts of the caliper, so that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is use our template and get the length. The first length is 340 millimeters, so we're going to measure that out really, really um, as specifically as we can. Okay, I've got my measurements down here. Um, I measured from the back of the board uh, going up, so 340 uh, millimeters ended up being right. Oops. 340 millimeters ended up be, being this line right here. The other parts were uh, 210 millimeters and 130 millimeters. So I went ahead and I scribed that. That's the 210 millimeters from the back of the board going across like that, and then 110 right here. All right, so let's get cracking here. Let's get our future board in, and the first thing we're gonna do is use this template to uh, scribe some lines. Now, these arms are all of a different length, so we're gonna need uh, two segments at 340 millimeters. We're gonna need uh, one segment at 210 millimeters, and we're going to need one segment at 130 millimeters. So let's get it, that going right now. All we'll need for that is a straight edge. And here's my future board. I measured from the, the very back of the future board forward, and so I put a line across at 340 millimeters, 210 210? Yes, 210 and 130 millimeters. Just going to scribe those lines so that you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so the next part is we're just going to take this popsicle stick as a template for our, our arm, and I'll just, I'll just kind of trace that out. I'm going to be very careful just to make sure that I'm um, getting that where it is possible with the edge of the future board. I'm going to line that up on the line, scribe out the width. Open 
that edge as close as I can. It's really important to make these measurements really, really super specific. Um, if you don't, you end up paying for it on the other side as far as the calibration of the, of the calipers themselves. That ought to do it. Take my straight edge. Just marry those lines together. And I'll do that a few more times um, for my two lengths at, at 340, my one length at 210, and my other length at 300, uh, 130. Okay, now I've got all those scribed out. I've used the square uh, just to make sure that my lines are perfectly uh, aligned and that you know nothing's gonna go wrong there. Those are square lines, so that, that's all nice. Um, I actually goofed up here. We only need one of these, but I, I made a mistake, so I'm only gonna, I had to draw it again. You only need one of the, of the um, 210 millimeter one. And I've got my little one here. They're in different colors, so you can, you can see what's going on. Uh, and now I'm just gonna use a, a, a good utility knife with a, with a nice sharp blade. I'm gonna be very careful as I, as I cut these cut these out. So needless to say, if, you, if you're if you cutting, you want to have a good surface to cut on. And if you're one of my younger subscribers, you may want to just be super, super careful, have an adult nearby uh, or have somebody cut it out for you. Okay. This is, this is no joke. I've cut myself quite a few times, but that, you know, I'm clumsy. So. One thing I forgot to say is it's, it's a good idea to make little points on the end of each one of these. That way it'll point out that golden mean a little bit better. So I'm just going to try to find the midpoint of my base right there. It doesn't have to be super, super specific. It also makes the cutting a little bit easier to have those kind of points drawn out. Again, I find the midpoint, just draw an angle. Tell I'm not very good in the wood shop. That's why they don't let me uh, work. That's why I teach humanities, guys. They also don't let me play with fire. Okay, there you have it. Those are your those are your pieces. Uh, we're gonna put those aside, and this I'll use for for more. I'm gonna not be wasteful. So now, what do we have here? Well, we're gonna have to construct this thing. Here's basically what it's gonna look like. Um, there's going to be a two, two long arms, uh, another arm that comes down. Actually, the shortest piece I didn't actually need to put a point on. Huh. Another glorious mistake by Mr. Kevin. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh well. It's going to connect there like that. In fact, I might I might just replace that. Okay, so now what are you gonna do? Well, basically what we're gonna do is construct this compass like so. The middle arm will connect to this arm in such a way at such a point that um, it'll it'll show the golden mean. Uh, what I had trouble with using this template was where exactly to put that and no matter how closely I measured according to the template You can see there's gonna be uh, brads here that keep it together uh, No matter how closely I measured uh, it still seemed to be a little off. So I had to go for uh, another solution and This was a really valuable lesson to me It put me back in this in the shoes of a learner uh, and the frustration I went through my god I was, no matter what, I can't tell you how many times I measured, re-measured, and it just wasn't working until um, I walked away from it. I walked away from it for about an hour. Uh, I came back and I had a different idea. I, I decided to go back to the way I did it before. I, I took out um, a, a pentagon and calibrated it using the, the pentagram that was created. So all I did was line up my arms to the different points and you can see that the, the middle arm should line up. This is the relationship of phi right here. This ratio to this. So if this is one, this is 1.618. And just to double check, you know, I, I would flip that over. 
uh, and do it that way too. And it was a little bit off, but pretty good. I mean, if you had sturdier materials, you'd have a better, a better tool. But l let me tell you, as, as a teacher who was becoming a learner again, it was a really good lesson for me to be back in the shoes of my students and feel that frustration and that struggle, um, and then to come through it. Um, that t you, you gotta have a little bit of tenacity there, kids, if you're gonna learn anything. <sighs> if you had been in the shop with me, though, you would have learned some new vocabulary words. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that now. Let's, let's, put the, let's put the pentagram back out here. Let's uh, line up my arms like so, and I'll make sure the apex is right here. All right. It's gonna take a little wiggling and adjusting. That's okay. That looks pretty good right there. So I'm gonna make sure that I mark a hole right there and then. That's, that's where it's going to be. Right, so now my other arm comes in and I want to make sure that it's lined up with by that point and pretty centered on the other arm. Now I'm going to just put the brad in right there so I know. And then finally, the controlling arm. I want to make sure that that is pretty much at the same length that no matter where I move this, everything's still lined up. A little hole there. A little hole there. And that should be good. Right, so now that we have our um, calipers lined up with the ratio that we're looking for, what we're gonna do is just uh, stick these, these brads uh, into into the holes to make some uh, joints so they can swing freely and keep that ratio throughout. Okay, so what I learned from that last uh, attempt was this brad right here, this hinge is, is the key one. Probably want to put that one in last. Get the other ones going and then recalibrate, put that one in last. But once you do, you've got something that is going to keep that ratio all the way, um, all the way through. I mean, that, that's looking like a pretty good, I'm pretty proud of that one. There you have it. Um, really easy project to do. Not a lot of expertise involved. And what you have now is something that you can go out and explore the, the world around you, the natural world, or, um, man-made items, artwork, you can find the golden ratio just about everywhere. And it's a lot of fun to do with your young ones if you have some. Take these to a, a museum and your mind will be blown. It's a great way to spend the day with your kids. If you don't mind people looking at you a little bit funny. Hey, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was instructive for you. Uh, if you like what I've been doing, please just, uh, you know, click the uh, subscribe button down there and I'll see if I can put some more material together for you. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for watching and I'll, I'll check you later.